Hey guys, welcome back. I'm doing a review for Silent Hill Origins. Now I'm sitting on my comfy beanbag. Please excuse the weather. It's been raining and there's been some thunderclaps happening here and there. So don't be surprised if you hear something in the background. And this is a bit of a cop out because I said I would do a review for Silent Hill 3. Um, I know this game really, really well. I've beaten it multiple times, but I really want to go back and play it again just to refresh my memory because I believe in reviewing a game in very much the spirit in which it's given and because I've recently just finished Silent Hill Origins I really want to share my opinions about what I thought about the game <clears throat> Excuse me, because like so many of these out there I'm a Silent Hill purist I really am a loyal fan of the games I will pick up all of your games if I am to try and find Silent Hill 1, 2 or 3 again because that's just not the case these days we're getting these Silent Hill titles on the top of the packaging yet it just doesn't deliver and when it comes to Silent Hill Origins, I'm afraid to say it does not deliver. There's some good parts, and then at the same time there's some really, really bad parts. So what I'm going to start off with is story, and the story was a very, very sore spot for me, and I'm ashamed to say that the story was completely forgettable. And that's really, really bad, because I do think that Silent Hill's story, and the characters and the development, it really gets your head thinking. It's supposed to do something psychologically psychologically to your brain. The story's supposed to crawl under your skin, much like Silent Hill 1, 2, and 3 did. And Silent Hill Origins just does not live up to the title. It's supposed to be an origin story. It does not set up Silent Hill 1 in any conceivable or any intelligent or convincing way. To me, it ain't high, but they shot far too low. Like they completely missed the point with the story here. I'm even having trouble remembering parts of the story because it's supposed to set up Silent Hill 1 and there's some familiar faces from here in this game from Silent Hill 1 but the way in which it's presented and executed it didn't convince me and that's that's really really a shame because our story starts off with Travis Grady and his truck has swerved off course he sees this ghost of a girl on the road and he miraculously swears off and he tries and find this girl and he comes to like this burnt house and he saves the remains of Alessa Gillespie and shortly after he rescues her he passes out and he wakes up in the town of Silent Hill. Now when it comes to our main characters or our main protagonists of Silent Hill each of our protagonists have had their part in the town of Silent Hill. Like Harry Mason he had his part in being Silent Hill that's where he found his daughter Cheryl. Um, Jane Sunderland was there because of his wife. Um, Silent Hill 3, Heather was there for revenge, and Henry, even though he, was, he wasn't really in the town of Silent Hill, he kind of had no choice, he was stuck in the alternate reality of Silent Hill. So either way you look at it, each of these protagonists have had their say in this town, but Travis really didn't play a part in it at all, like, he had no... Why was he there? Like... I'm really trying to rack up my brain to think why he was there. He, the story revolves around his, uh, his post-traumatic stress disorder, I guess. Like some really ill-fitted child memories, and he's trying to regroup what's happened during his childhood. But still, when you come to the conclusion of the story, it just doesn't add up. And I'm, it's really a shame to hear that the story of Silent Hill was quite bad. I think I'd say that the story of a Silent Hill game would be so bad, but it just was. And the same thing could be equally said for the characters. You got Travis Grady, there's a few familiar faces here like Lisa Gowan, um, Dr. Kaufman, and Dahlia Gillespie from the first Silent Hill, but the airtime that they give them is really, really limited. They didn't give me time to figure out what led to them doing what they did in the first Silent Hill. There's no rhyme or reason why they weren't able to give them more screen time. And they focus more on a non-existent character which doesn't belong in the Silent Hill universe, I feel anyway. So the characters, along with the story, were just bland and rather boring. Like, completely forgettable stuff. Um, when it comes to gameplay, there's good, there's unamountable bad. There's so much bad going on with the gameplay. The gameplay is almost similar to the Silent Hill games, the previous Silent Hill games. Only difference being the weapon system. Now, there are breakable weapons in this game. You can you can pretty much hold a whole hardware store of goods, like, like a portable television, a toaster, um, a knife, a 
drip, a lamp stand, all sorts of crazy weapons, but they all break. Like, you can throw them, the one-time use items, and then they break. I just don't know how they thought that this would work, or seem tangible in any way, without people being pissed off with this system. There, there are a few guns here, but ammo is strictly limited, like, very rarely do you get, you find yourself hauling a whole bunch of ammo, and it wasn't until the very last two hours of the game in which I finally unloaded on all of my guns. Um, along with the gameplay, the monster design was quite uninspiring, a little bit too copy and paste, because a lot of the monsters make referrals to Silent Hill 2, but it seemed more of a copycat thing, it didn't seem original. Like, there is a monster that looks like the line figure from Silent Hill 2, the one that wears the straight jacket. It was such a cop-out because they were trying to copy it, and it was the same for Pyramid Head as well. Um, the creature in this game is called the Butcher, and it was just complete. It looked like the same thing. When I saw him, I was just like, oh, it's a Pyramid Head knockoff, just with no Pyramid Head, and a smaller knife, like, they really had the opportunity to do something really, really great with this game, but instead they decided to just copy and paste most of the enemies, and with the bosses, like, the bosses were extremely lackluster as well, I felt, and the monsters, or the boss battles, as soon as you beat them, they become frequent monsters, like, you bump into them a lot, and it was really uninspiring to see that monsters were reused in this way, or bosses should we say, were reused in this manner of speaking. They could have done a lot better with that. Um, also with the gameplay it was navigation and the town of Summer Hill itself. The town of Summer Hill was quite boring, there wasn't a lot to do, wasn't a lot to explore. The fog was really limited. Oh, the gameplay was just bearable to me. The camera angles were pretty much the same, you, you do have to hold down the L2 button to convert the camera so you can view it, so you can, you know, so you know where you're going, sort of thing. Um, but the gameplay was just overall average at best. Um, I did like aspects of the gameplay, like the alternate realities, you touch the mirror and you transport to the other world. That was kind of cool, but if you look at it deeply like the way I do, going back and forth between these worlds sounds cool, but it becomes a bit of a chore ever so now not, like, previous Silent Hill games, you didn't have a choice. If you went to the other world, you were stuck there until you could find a way out. This gave you the option. You can go in and out, in and out, in and out. So, it was a bit of a 50-50 thing. Yes, it was a cool touch, but it had no rhyme or reason behind it whatsoever. Um, the locations of some of the levels were really quite fantastic, I thought. Um, they took some opportunities to pay homage to Silent Hill 2 in particular. Um, like you come up to like a sanitarium, which was kind of cool. Um, then you come up to like a theatre, and then you come up to like a butcher shop. It was there's some good environments going on here, but again, it wasn't original. We've seen it before. They could have done a lot better. When it comes to the highlights of the game, I must say that the music was absolutely divine. I mean, the soundtrack of Silent Hill Origins was something. It's right behind Silent Hill 2, which I revere as Akira Yamioka's best work. It's Akira's best work, Silent Hill 2. Silent Hill Origins will be a close second, I think. That's how good the soundtrack is. And I think the credit of the soundtrack really goes to the original member, uh, Akira Yamaoka. Because he is legendary for making such masterful music. And without the music, I wouldn't be able to identify this as a Silent Hill game. And I've got a, a lot of favourite tracks in this. My favourite tracks are um, uh, The Healer, Snowblind, um, Blowback. Um, the main singer in this is uh, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, the voice of Silent Hill. She does a fantastic job. She really nails it. She nails the spirit and the atmosphere of Silent Hill like no other. And believe me when I say that, she should belong every single Silent Hill soundtrack. That's how good this woman is. So the soundtrack was absolutely the winning point for me. The graphics, I played the PS2 copy of Silent Hill Origins, obviously. It was originally a PSP game, and this is a direct port. And with the graphics, I wasn't impressed, because it looks like the graphics were just blown up. On the PSP, mind you, the graphics were great. They were absolutely fantastic. On the PS2, not so much. It was not good. To the point in which it 
almost looked like Silent Hill 1 in a way, a PS1 game, mind you. I might seem quite harsh, but I give reviews in the manner in which they're given to me, so what you what you get is what you hear, pretty much. So the graphics were not crap, they could have taken time and done some really magical stuff with the graphics, but they didn't. It was just a complete port with blown up graphics and that was it. So I think that's all I can really give Song Hill Origins some really good credit on would be the use of the environments and the music, because everything else is a bit of a sore spot. So if I'm going to be trying to make a recommendation on playing Song Hill Origins, I'm going to say beware, because it's not the worst game in the world. I'm telling you now, Song Hill Origins is not the worst game I've ever played. It's a decent game. It's good in parts, actually really good in parts. It aims high, but falls short, and that's its problem. It feels more like a copycat situation here, because this is the first game that was developed by a Western team, uh, Climax Studios. They had the opportunity of grasping such a great, uh, a great franchise and running with these great ideas, but instead they chose to adhere to a, the strict formula in which made Silent Hill so iconic. And if you're going to do this with different team members. It needs to be something innovative, something original, something we haven't seen before. And because they chose just to rehash the game almost, reuse monster ideas, reuse gameplay mechanics to a point, it falls short. And that really is the harsh pill for me to swallow because I really love Sun Hill games, but and I was expecting to love Sun Hill Origins because there's no reason why a Western development team should not be able to make a great Sun Hill 2 game. There's no reason whatsoever. They can do a really good job with this franchise, but it was a step forward and two steps back for me. So if I'm trying to rank this out of 10, which I don't usually do, oh, I'd say about a 5.5, and, and that's being generous, because to me it's not a Silent Hill game. It's trying to be Silent Hill, but it's not. I hope I haven't been too harsh in this review. I know a lot of people do not like this game. When it comes to the Silent Hill community, a lot of people don't like this. It's just as bad as Silent Hill 4. Silent Hill 4 was not the worst game in the world. But there were a lot of flaws with it. You can't deny that. So, in a sense, it's almost as bad as Homecoming. Origins is just as bad as Homecoming. There's a lot of stuff that they could have done, but there's a lot of things that they didn't do. I'm so conflicted. Um, I'm handing it over to you now. So, what do you guys think about Silent Hill Origins? Do you guys think it was crap? Do you guys think they shouldn't have released it? Uh, do you guys want to see the reins handed back over to, Som uh, to Team Silent? I don't know. Um, please leave your comments and, section, uh, comments and ideas in the section below, and I will get back to you. So thanks for watching, guys. I shall see you next time. Bye.